there are five things that you must understand if you're trying to get volume in your hair. Okay, there are a lot of things that I've learned over the past 26 years of doing hair, and these five things have really changed the game. And so, yes, stick around, we're gonna talk about them, and we're gonna make your getting volume in your hair a whole lot easier. Sound good? Okay, and if you know me, if you doesn't suck at, at all, actually. Okay, but before we dive into the five kind of fundamental things that you must understand, we first need to understand what actual volume is. So when I'm talking about volume, I'm not talking about just having big hair. Now, depending on your texture, that might be actually kind of a detriment for you. It might be a, a problem, or at minimum, it might be really easy for you, and you're like, I don't need more volume. So volume is having lift or volume in the right areas. And this allows us to accentuate certain things about the face shape or maybe take away certain things, kind of mask some things that we don't feel as comfortable with. And this, if you've watched any of my series on hair mistakes that age you faster, subscriber edition specifically, then you know I talk a lot about this. It's not just a length of hair, it's what we do inside of that length that makes it look good on somebody. And that is all related to volume, where that bulk is and how we bring certain aspects of someone's face shape out. So that's what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, was that a death chicken? What, is that a vulture? Okay, as long as I'm not on the dinner plate, that's, oh my gosh, they're huge. <laughs> All right, anyway, so now that you know what volume is, should we talk about these 500? I'm going this way, actually, for now, but we'll talk, one sec. Okay, so the first fundamental thing you must understand is that volume is an optical illusion. I know, that doesn't really make sense, right? So here's the thing. Many times I find that people are just trying to create volume in general, right? Their goal is, well, I wanna create bigger hair, and they're not really paying attention to, like I talked about before, that volume is important to have in certain areas, and sometimes that means taking volume out of other areas to create the illusion that there's more volume in the areas that we want. So let's say, for instance, you're trying to create volume on the top. This is a very common thing, right? Many times, if you can't seem to get the amount of volume you're looking for on top, pay attention to what's going on through the sides. Because if we can pull that volume in, via using a flat iron many times actually can help to smooth that out a bit and lay that hair a little bit flatter, or just not getting as much volume in that area, not trying to achieve the amount of volume in that area, having that area lay flatter can help the top to actually look like it's got more volume, even when it doesn't necessarily have more volume. So understanding that volume is proportional and where we take volume out of can create the illusion of volume in other areas is gonna take you one step farther to creating the amount of volume that you want. It isn't always just bigger hair that we want, it's the right amount of bigger hair in the right places. Make sense? <laughs> okay, the second fundamental thing that you have to understand is that root lift does not inherently create volume. Now I see this all the time. People spend so much effort trying to get their roots lifted up off of their scalp in the idea that this is how we create volume. And in reality, that's just part of volume. That doesn't create true volume. Root lift plus bend through the mid shaft and the ends is where volume actually comes from. So even if you're creating root lift, but you're not creating that bend from the mid shaft to the ends, all you're gonna get is hair that's just kind of larger, but doesn't really have shape, or again, the volume that we were talking about before where we're creating volume in certain areas. So it's a combination, root lift plus the bend through the mid shaft to the ends, that creates volume. Now I've done a lot of videos on how to actually create that specific kind of bend, and I'll go ahead and link those in the description below so that you can easily find them if you wanna check them out. But just understand that root lift is just the beginning then we need to actually create the bend that's gonna take us the rest of the way. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay. Fundamental thing number three. Now the third fundamental thing that you have to understand is how to effectively use a volumizing aid. Now there's kind of a two-step process to this. The first thing that I find behind the chair all the time is that many times people just simply aren't using enough. So I have a little bit of a process on how to see if you're using enough of the product or not. Um, but before I jump into that process, I do want to kind of throw out the caveat that this is a bit more specific to volumizing products. So think gels, mousses, gel mousse, <laughs> thickening paste, stuff like that. 
not like oils or hairsprays or things of that nature that might just find you in a world of a mess. But if it is a volumizing specific aid, then what I tell clients to do is when you go home, open your hand up, grab that product, and squirt about two to four times the amount of product that you think you need in your hair or that you would typically use into your hand and work that through your hair. And it's simple as maybe just using a little bit more product to really get the effects out of it. Or at minimum, you're going to start learning what that kind of appropriate threshold is for how much you actually need. But it is shocking how often I find people just using a tiny little bit and not even having enough to really work through their hair, let alone get the result of the product, and then feeling like, well, I just can't get volume or that product doesn't work. Now, step two of this process is actually making sure that you're applying it correctly. This comes from the concern I just talked about earlier where people are just focused many times on getting root lift and not creating actual bend to get volume. When you're working on volumizing to aid through your hair, I see the exact same problem. The process for many people is to work that product in through their roots and then start to dry. So that product is only helping them create root lift and not actually aiding them in creating bend that creates the true volume. So one thing that you wanna be sure of is when you're working that volumizing product through your hair that you work it not only through the roots, but through the mid shaft and the ends. Now, a little key tip here, if you're trying to eliminate volume from the sides, for instance, to create the illusion of creating more volume in the top, like we talked about in the first fundamental thing you needed to know, then one way to achieve that or to help achieve that is to work all of this product up through the areas where you want volume and not work it through areas where you don't want volume. But paying attention to where you want volume and then paying attention to where you're applying product to create that volume or to minimize that volume, that is key. So, yes, I hope all that wrapped together, but let's dive on to four. Okay, now the fourth kind of theory that you need to understand is unfortunately, whether you like the idea of having product in your hair or not, if you want true volume, you're likely gonna need it. It's like building a house without using walls. It just kind of doesn't work. <laughs> so many times I hear in the chair from clients, they're trying to create volume. I wanna create volume, I want lift, I want this particular shape, but I don't like the feeling of product in my hair. I don't wanna use any product. More than nine out of 10 times, that's not gonna happen. There are products that are gonna create less of a texture in your hair than others, but at the end of the day, you're gonna to have to use something if you really wanna create true volume and not just have fluffy hair. Last two tips, two, and yes, I can count. So I've got five that I was told you about and I've got one kind of little bonus tip that's equally as important that you're not gonna to wanna to miss. So we're actually gonna head back to the room and then fill you in on those. Sound good? Okay. Okay, so now we're back in, ooh, there's a lot of echo. <laughs> All right, so let's dive into the last two fundamental things that you need to understand that are gonna help you create volume in your hair. Number five is, and this is actually a big one, and this is to use the correct size of a round brush. Now, yes, you can create volume with a curling iron, and this is going to fall over to the idea of curling irons as well. Um, and you can create it with a flat iron, which is a little bit different, but if you're using a round brush or you're using curlers or you're using a curling iron, something that is has a round barrel that you're wrapping your hair around to create that bend, you wanna make sure that that barrel is the correct size. And ultimately what that means is that your hair doesn't wrap around it too many times. Now, of course, if you're dealing with longer hair, say past the collarbone, for instance, then it is going to wrap around a little bit more, but that's just to say for those lengths that are collarbone or longer to get you know, a jumbo two inch radius or larger brush. If your hair is shorter than that, then you wanna move smaller. But if your hair wraps around that brush too many times, you can actually find that you'll get wave or curl in your hair. And that's actually harder to create the volume specifically that we're talking about that bend that creates shape. So it isn't to say that curl is bad, it's just to say that it's not going to create the kind of bend that we're speaking of that creates that kind of volume. You also wanna make sure that that round brush has a good tension on it. 
That means that when you put it in your hair, it shouldn't just slide through your hair really easily, but it also shouldn't grab your hair and pull it so hard that it hurts. It wants you to just have a nice tug on your hair. Now this is gonna help work it through your hair easier. Also, it's gonna help work some of that product through your hair so that your hair isn't feeling like it's got as much stuff in your hair. It'll give it a little bit of a softer feeling after it's dried, and it's gonna help to smooth it out a little bit better. So keep all those things in mind. And now with that said, should we talk about a bonus tip? Yes, of course we should, because I told you we're going to. <laughs> okay, bonus tip. If you're trying to create some root lift that will help to start on your way to creating bend to create volume, one way that you can do that is to dry your hair against the way that you're going to be styling it. Now, I've talked about this in other videos, and actually I've done a couple reviews of other beauty vloggers that have used this technique in their styling videos, and it works very well. What happens is you're blow drying your roots against the way that they're going to want to fall or the way that you're going to be styling them. This is gonna to help to create a little bit of bend at the roots, which is gonna to help to create a little bit of volume. The other thing you wanna make sure is that when you're drying it that way, that you heat it up and you allow your hair to heat, and then you actually hit the cool button or just leave your hair parted like that until it cools down. And this is gonna kinda of lock that bend into place. Now, once it's all styled and you're all said and done, there are a couple ways that you can help to kind of maintain some of the root lift specifically through products after everything is styled. Now, one product that a lot of people don't pay attention to that actually works really well for this and doesn't get greasy is actually dry shampoo. Yeah, you really wouldn't expect dry shampoo to create volume, but it absolutely can. Now, I do have a favorite dry shampoo that I currently use. It's from a company called Hair Story, and it's called Powder. I actually use it in my hair to create volume all the time, and I use it behind the chair all the time. I'll go ahead and throw a link to that in the description below as well, so if you wanna find that easier, that's where you're gonna find it. But just pumping a few pumps of that into your hair at the roots after everything is said and done, or you can even tilt your head upside down and do it like that, that will actually help to create a little bit of texture at those roots and help create a little bit of that root lift. But again, you're still gonna want that bend to create true volume. I've talked about that way too much today. I think you already know. <laughs> so if that helped you out, give me a huge favor, comment below and let me know. And otherwise, uh, I'm going to enjoy that view and you can enjoy this video right here you're going to learn more and it's important. <laughs> All right. Thank you for hanging out. Uh, I'll see you next Tuesday in the next video. Take care now. Bye.